obedience is a command, not a choice of convenience. God's word is coming to you shortly. Get ready for your enlightenment and overall transformation. As God's servant, Dr. Maxwell Golden Abe unveils the undiluted word of God. Christianity is almost becoming a failed state because of lack of sustainability. Bishop Yedipo once said, this one of his sons in the Lord came to visit him in his office and then he asked him to kneel down and he said to him, go and take responsibilities. So the young man asked him, Papa, is that a prayer? He said, yes. Go and take responsibilities. Young boy was worried that his father had prayed that kind of prayer. But it was after he left, he discovered that he wasn't taking responsibility. That was why things have stopped working for him. He's just busy praying, but never taking any physical responsibilities over his life, over the things of God. He's a pastor. Never doing anything that will lift up the image of God in his life. So I have a little piece here before I teach you. Sustenance is a strong word that must be heavily checked by the church. What you don't daily practice can never bless your life. The practice of sustenance is the key to growth. The practice of sustenance is the super key to growth in the kingdom. Isn't, isn't it amazing that you see people complain about church, talk about church, give all kinds of excuses about church. The, the thing is not the church. People don't practice sustainability in their walk with God. People don't sustain spirituality. Your spirituality, your spiritual life was 10%. And uh, you are still 10%. After one year. You have not sustained a temple. Of salvation. That has the capacity. To bless your life. You have a healthy character. You didn't sustain that character. You are a giver in church. You did not sustain the giving. You give today. You complain tomorrow. You give today. You show attitude tomorrow. You show a good character today, you show a bad one tomorrow. You are prayerful today, you are prayerless tomorrow. You are conscious of righteousness today, tomorrow you don't care about righteousness. You are a great giver today, tomorrow you are a bad complainer about giving. I'm giving no result, I'm giving no this, I'm giving no that. And you still expect the same God. What killed John? was not evil. It was him not being, sus not being able to sustain his prophecy. That was what killed him. Nothing else. Is God a good God? Somebody say, I I'm not sure. If it's a good this is August. You grow from honoring him to dishonor. All of a sudden, you are dishonoring everything that concerns God. Suddenly, you see yourself disregarding everything about Jesus. You see, that fluctuation is the reason why you are asking for things to happen to your life. Because it is sustenance that enables take note manifestations. Take note very kindly. It is sustenance that 
enables manifestations. It's not how hard you pray. It's not who lays hands on you. It's your sustainability continually that enables manifestations. You are in service with God. Suddenly you don't serve anymore. Suddenly you see yourself drag footing to serve. Everything about serving is offending you. The problem is not the things you are asking for. It's your sustaining power. Because it is that sustenance that gives you the results. Not the prayers. Not the prayers. It is the sustaining power that you display that aids your result. Not the prayers itself. Very active in serving God. Right now as we speak, you can't even get up and serve God anymore. All everything about service is dead. Everybody around you is talking nonsense. And it is that sustaining power that has the grant to bless your life. You are loving God now, you don't love him anymore. You obey now, you don't obey anything. Obedience is far from you. You are struggling with obedience every day of your life. You must have something to say when you are asked to do things for the Lord. Please take note, sustenance is, the, is that code that works when everything falls. When everything is falling, failing, it is only your capacity to stay sustained that gives you result. When everything has failed, it is sustenance that gives you answers. The sickness is still there, but your faith is sustained that I must be healed. That's when you get healed. You have paid your tithe. Give your offering. But things are still tough. It is that sustenance that takes you out of the problem. It is your capacity to stay sustained that takes you out of the problem. You will not stay too long in a, in a place. No. Believers are just living an unguided life. Unguided. In front of four, eleven, seven, twenty. Be quickly, please. That's not my message. I just want to brush you. I want us to pray. You know, last month I gave. I'm not giving again. No problem. Continue your your attitude. They are virtually pushing you to do things for God. Now, what what is wrong with you? What is wrong with you? See, when you have knowledge, you are not begged to do anything. To pray, to love. We have been in a place where we don't see reasons to love people anymore. Are you following me now? Are you following me now? Even to help. But you see, the Bible says we should do that. It's not a man's action that defines that. Are you following me now? It's what the Bible says we should do. So a mass action does not define my attitude. No, I won't live my life like that. People don't define how I live. I define my life by the antics of the Bible. That's how I live my life. Look at that scripture. Second Kings 4.11. You will not fail. It fell on a day that he came to the, and he turned into the chambers. This woman built a house for a pastor. By, look at verse 17. By verse 17, God has blessed her. And this is the character everyone should pick as believers. God has blessed her. The woman conceived. She has had a child. But suddenly the devil stroke. And her attitude is what took her out of that crisis. Her behavior took her out of that crisis. Go to verse 20. The things she said 
how she behaved. And when she had taken him, brought him to his mother, he sat on his knees, and the child did what? This is a testimony that is dead. She has touched her testimony, and the child is dead. Now, at that point, we should be accusing the pastor, accusing the God, accusing the church. Go to verse 22. But this lady says, it is well. And she called unto her husband and said, send me, I pray thee, one of the young men and one of the axes that I may run to the man of God. She knew where to go to. Not to a friend, not to a colleague, that I may run to God and come again. Verse 23. Everybody read that scripture loud. And he said, on wherefore, without go to him, stay. It is noonday. And then she said, it is what? It is well. That was where the answer came from. If she had pronounced, my child is dead, that child remains dead till Jesus come. She said, it is well. She refused the evil testimony. Sustenance in the church must come alive. Don't you sit with any believer that talks and reduces the church. Sustenance in the things of the spirit is what sustains your testimony. Mark chapter 5. There was a lady in the Bible. The Bible said in verse 25 that she was tormented by all men. They have eaten her monies for treatment and everything. If you are in the shoes of this woman, I don't think you will need prayer anymore. Science has failed. But the Bible said she had, look at it, doctors have failed here. She has done everything to be healed. No healing. Now she had and said if I and touch the hem of his garment. I shall be made whole. You see, she sustained her faith until her answer came. She sustained her faith. Lift your two hands up. May you never cry at last. Yeah. Lift your hand. May you rejoice at the end. Yeah. Lift your two hands. May you laugh at the end. Yeah. May you be the one to dance at the end. May they mock you now, but may you dance at the end. May you rejoice at the end. May you build the house at the end. May you get married at the end. May you carry your child at the end. Lift your voice and say amen. Let me hear you. I end with this testimony. A young man said he got married when Archbishop Idaosa was alive. So Archbishop Idaosa was calling them Mama Samuel, Mama Samuel, Mama Samuel, when they have not gotten back to children. They, they stayed for 18 years, no child. The woman will get up and start misbehaving. The man will say, the man who told us that the child is Samuel is a prophet of God. And I believe in him. The child will come. After 18 years, the child came. The man kept his faith on that prophecy. When you don't doubt, you will see. When you doubt, you will complain. And when you complain, you will remain there. You will stay there. God is not begging you. It is you that will approach God in faith. Man has no right to take the glory when it concerns him. Lift your hands and say in the name of Jesus. I ask for the grace of sustenance. Oh yeah, pray that prayer. Pray it loud. Sustain my faith. For the results of my life. Hello. Look at me. Please clear your cloud. The way you say will you take debt away from your house. Clear people around you. Who speak negatively. They will ruin your answers. They will destroy God's will for your life. 
We began a teaching on worship and miracles. And I want to continue. We will try to define what worship is a little bit. And then we continue. So what is worship? It is a practical approach to give God or to get God attention. What is worship? It is a practical approach to gain God's love. When you worship, you gain his attention. When you worship, you gain his love. What is worship? It is a practical approach to gain God's wonders. When you worship God, you will experience his wonders. So what is miracle? Miracle is the divine acts of God. Miracle is a supernatural expression of heaven. Miracles are the fruits of heaven. Why must we worship God? Number one, because he owns our life. Genesis 1 from verse 1 to 2. Number two, because he is the creator. Okay, own life, Genesis 2, 7. He is the creator of our life, Genesis 1, 1 to 2. These two reasons are enough. Number three, why must we worship God? Because he owns all things. There is nothing we own that does not belong to God. John 1 from verse 1 to 3. All things we are made by him. Why must you worship God? Number 4. He can do all things because God can do anything. Philippians 2, 6 to 7. God can John 14, 23 to 24. And John 16, 13 to 14. God can do anything. That is why we must worship him. Are you with me? My mission here today is to make you catch the true meaning of worship. Let me begin by saying that God is a jealous God. Exodus 34 from verse 14. If God is a jealous God, then we need to review how we worship God in church. Because if God is a jealous God, then I can tell you the things we do in church is activities, not worship. Genesis 34 from verse 14. Read everybody. For thou shalt not do what? Before the Lord. Whose name is what? He is who? So if I am jealous, if I ask you to define jealousy, how do you define it? Jealousy is an extreme act of attention. Am I correct? An extreme act of attention where you give somebody extreme act of attention. You just want to act at every second over someone's life. The Bible says our father is a jealous God. So if God is a jealous God, then we must review our act of service. So if God is a jealous God, it is important we know what God expects of us because in every relationship, there is supposed to be expectation. Am I correct? Am I correct? Am I correct? If God is a jealous God, then in every relationship, there must be an expectation. Psalm 29 from verse 3. Psalm 5 from verse 7. Psalm 95 from verse 6. Read everybody, read loud. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The God of glory turned direct. The Lord is upon the waters. This is God now. 
This is his voice. This is how powerful his voice is. Keep going. Let's, let's go to the next chapter. Psalm, read. But as for me, I will come into thy house in the multitude of my mercy and in thy fear. Will I do what? I will do what? Thy holy temple. My boss David is speaking there gallantly. Psalm 95 from verse 6. Look at it. Oh, come, let us do what? Bow down. Let us kneel before our what? Maker. Until value is expressed, worship can never be effective. It is the value you give to the one you worship that makes the worship effective. So wherever value is lost, the act will not be effective. So if we take our time today and review our attitude in worship, you will discover clearly that you don't have value for him. But you only pay attention to the needs he has to meet. So your activities are bound to the needs that God has to solve. Not your value for who God is. I've always said. He doesn't need to be God because he answers prayers. He is God without answering prayers. So if God only becomes God when he answers prayers, then that God is a shrine. But if you call him God, then he needs to be a God that has a relationship with you. Then there is a value based God. You value him. And it is that value that makes worship very effective. Now, let me say this. If I am a valuable person and I am your guest, is the approach different? Is it different? And if I am not valuable, will the approach be different? Yes, you just casually do what? Wait for me. You may not even expect me. You may not even prepare for me. You may just say, you don't come. See, don't hear the come. You may go into your room and spend two hours. Because the guest is not valuable. But if I am valuable, you'll be the one to wait a longer time for me to arrive. Now, if humanly, we treat people by value. How much more God? So we lift up holy hands. That is, that is just a song. The song is not a tool for worship. Worship is an attitude. I have an attitude when I come from the gate. From the gate of the church. You understand that? The importance of the presence of God. Your whole life changes from there. You know, I was studying something two days ago. And the Lord said to me, he said, you know that Abraham worshipped Abraham worship God by the killing of his child. So Abraham saw worship as killing his own child. Genesis 22 for 4 verse 5. Let's look at it. He said, I am going to worship God. To do what? To kill his child of promise. He didn't go there to sing the song. Look at him. He told them, Abraham said unto his young men, Abide ye here. I and the Lord will go yonder and worship and come again to you. What was he going to do in that mountain? What was he going to do? What was he going to do? To do what with the son? He described killing a child as a form of worship. You see, that was how valuable God was to him. That he can lose his child because of God and never bothered. Abraham could lose his child of promise and never bothered because he had value for God. So I concluded, anywhere you see dishonor, the problem is not the personal issue, it's a value issue. 
Write it down. It's a value crisis that's the problem. Anywhere you see dishonor, it's a value crisis that's the problem there. No more, not less. Abraham took his child of promise and did not tell his wife. Hey. Did not tell his wife. Did not tell Isaac. He said, son, we are going to worship God. He was going to kill his child. But he described that act as a form of worship. Lift your two hands up. May you not struggle for answers anymore. Yeah. May this little wisdom, this revelation, give you easy access. As you stand to talk, may heaven be open to you. Yeah. Please. Two of you come. Two of you. Please follow me. If this man has everything this man needs and he kneels down to pray pray remember the bible says the king's pray now pray the king's heart is in the hand of god am i right so that means whatever need this man has this man has the capacity to meet it am i right am i correct oh yeah come this man passed an instruction Everybody stand at the gate. He refused to stand. Follow me. He refusing to stand. All the instruction that this man gave, this guy is gallantly breaking them in style. Now please, the reason for this attitude is not because he lacks wisdom. It's because he doesn't know that after you have prayed, you need character to execute your answers. So, if this man has what I need, I need to please this man to get it. Am I right? Answer, am I correct? Yes, so, if I am consistently displeasing this man, but I am prayerful, will I get answers? No! No. So let us put the church in a scale of five. And you can tell me clearly the problem of the church is not prayerfulness or prayerlessness. Our problem is attitudinal issues. We don't know how to attend to God for results. We don't know how to attend to God for answers. Lift your hands once one more time. May you not pray too long. Amen. Go. May you not pray too long. Amen. Lift your two hands. May you not pray too long. Amen. May you not pray. <laughs> Say, where is your God? That, that's, the, that's the most unwise statement to make. There is a sweet super God willing to do anything. Just do your right acts. And you see him act according to plan. Your approach towards his presence is what signals an intervention to your existence. You don't even need to pray. Oh. When you are truly in a communion, your thoughts are noticed. Write it down. When you are truly in a communion, your thoughts are noticed. I saw something in the Bible in 1 Kings 3. God did not answer Solomon's prayer. He answered Solomon's thoughts. It was the thoughts of Solomon God answered. Solomon did not pray. He gave an offering. And God said, I have seen your heart. It was the thought of Solomon that God answered, not his prayers. It was the thought of Solomon that Jesus answered, not his prayers. Thank you for watching. 
We hope you have been blessed by this message. True God's servant, Dr. Maswell Golden Abe. Heaven's arms are open wide to welcome you, no matter how far you have gone from him. If you want to accept Jesus into your life, kindly say this prayer. Lord Jesus, I believe you died for me and I repent of every one of my sins. Please forgive me. Come into my life even as I confess you as my Lord and personal Savior. I declare that I am born again and I receive grace to live for you in Jesus' name. Amen. One World International Railroad City is located along Asaba Ibozo Expressway, opposite Step Down Transformer, Asaba Delta State, Nigeria. You can follow us in all our social media platforms Facebook at Hano WI, Facebook at Dr. Maxwell Golden Abe, Instagram at Hano WI, Instagram at Dr. Maxwell Golden Abe, YouTube at Hano TV. Please do well to share your testimony at honoworld at gmail.com or call 081-3655-7322 or call 081 Zero seven five two zero zero two two.